I had a support ticket into QNAP for the past several months, and it was about Container Station and Container Station's handling of VLANs. Well, this morning, um, August the 2nd, they released version 2.4.0.2316 of Container Station. And I upgraded it on my lab NAS and ended up, um, which is a TS-877, and when I upgraded it, it printed this message out, which basically said LXC end of support notification. Container station will end support of LXC containers by the end of 2021. The application will cease support on the creation and modification of LXC containers. QNAP recommends migrating to LXD, the next generation system container manager of Linux containers. Um, so in any event, um, I went and looked a little bit further. Um, this is a test machine on my production machine. I actually have quite a few um, other uh, containers running out there, but this is an LXC container that existed prior to the update. So let's go over to the create option here and let's scroll down to the bottom. And you will notice that first of all, at the top, they have the um, AI containers and here they have the IOT containers and then characteristically um, we used to have app containers at the bottom and then some docker containers that were like standard ones that they provided and then we had some um, LXC containers. Well you'll notice we're at the bottom and there is no option anymore to create any LXC containers. So the reason LXC containers are important is because they allow you to virtualize not only the application, but virtualize the operating system. So if you have a more complex application that you want to install, ideally what you'd like is an LXC container because that way you can install all the different products that you need on it. In addition, you can turn around and update it, you know, sudo app update, sudo app upgrade. Uh, you can replace applications and so on. Whereas with a Docker container, um, things remain pretty static. Uh, you have to really deploy a new version of the Docker container. Um, you can externally mount um, non-volatile data outside the Docker container, but the Docker container code bits itself basically have to be replaced. So anyway, as I mentioned up front, one of my most biggest concerns about con the newer container station was that I had um, run into a problem several months ago where when I would go create a container um, and then I would try to go modify the settings of that container and I would try to go down to the uh, network if I was on a bridge network and pick a different network adapter um, it would blank out all my network adapters after one of the container station up Grades. And I had to go to QNAP and get them to uh, put a patch in to fix that. Well, that was because that patch was supposed to handle a problem with virtual uh, VLAN networks. So if we go to network and virtual switch, you will see that on my network and virtual switch, I have adapters one and two teamed together. So that's fine. Network's great. And I have adapter three, where I've decided to implement two VLANs. Um, these are VLANs that are already in my network infrastructure. So I have a VLAN 30 and a VLAN 80 out there, and their address ranges are correct according to this. Um, and when I created the VLANs, they got a DHCP address for my uh, infrastructure and assigned it to the VLAN adapters. So all is fine and great there. And in this one down here, uh, oh yeah, and by the way, the port profile for the port that Adapter 3 is plugged into in the infrastructure has a profile that includes these VLANs, so that would be a prerequisite. And then Adapter 4 here, well, it's directly connected into uh, a uh, switch port also, but the switch port on it is uh, dedicated to that particular uh, VLAN, so that's not a problem. So it, from, from QNAP's point of view, that's just the network. It's not a VLAN. But in any event, what I wanted to test was this capability here. So as soon as the new container station was out, I went ahead and created these two VLANs, as you can tell. 
Uh, one is called ATF Corral and the other one is called uh, Cloud DMC. Anyway, if we go back to Container Station and we go into Settings and we go into Advanced Settings um, and I go into Adapters and I choose Adapter 3, it automatically goes to the first VLAN on Network and Virtual Switch. It didn't give me a choice of the VLANs. It just showed me that one particular VLAN. So that was that's definitely a fail. They have not done what they said they were going to do. At least I have my adapters where I can choose them, but I can't select which VLAN I want this container connected to. So that's a huge issue. Um, going over to Virtualization Station, I wanted to make sure it hadn't messed with anything in regards to VLAN. So I have this uh, WireGuard uh, container up here. It's running Ubuntu. And if I hit the gear and I go over to settings and I go down to network in virtualization station, uh, we can switch on the network thing here. And right now this is connected to this LabNet network. Well, uh, I only have a choice of the Cloud DMZ network physical adapter or the LabNet physical adapter. Now, in that previous version of virtualization station, uh, if you created VLANs, it would give you the VLAN capability down here. But now you can see that it's similarly broken, just like it's broken over in Container Station. Well, actually broken a little differently. In any event, this is something I wanted to point out to the user community. I've posted in Reddit, and I've also posted on the QNAP um, PHP PP forum. Um, and uh, I hope that... Um, Eventually, they come up with a fix for this. In any event, uh, it is something that uh, should be of concern and just wanted everyone to be aware of it. Thank you.